The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Waugh here from Mr. Waugh Media, and yes, that is my actual name. And today, we're going back to the trenches, soldier. Now those of you that have the memory slightly more advanced than the goldfish might recall that, wait, we've done trenches previously, and you're right. We made these little pieces that were quick, simple, and easy to execute, and you can make several of these in one sitting. Now you might be asking, well, if you have trenches like this, what more do you need? Well, according to my gaming group, they're extremely needy. You see, they've gotten into historical games, so they want epic trenches from the world wars and beyond. So they came to me to design something that would cover at least a quarter or half a table. So thanks to Mitch and the boys, we're retiring these and bringing the big guns in. I gotta build four of these. Let's get started. The very first step that I did was lay down some sheets of styrofoam to give a really crude layout of the trench network. When I was more or less satisfied with the layout, I took the blade to the edges and rounded them out to make the final trench network that you see here. The next step was obviously deciding where the trenches were going to be on the board. So I took a trusty ruler here, made the trenches about 2 inches wide, and you can see them going back and forth. There's an outer layer, an inner shell, and the back command bunker. With the trenches now firmly etched into the board, it's time to start working with the negative spaces where the majority of the earthwork is going to be. For this, I'm going to use 1 inch thick styrofoam and start hacking it into crude shapes that will match those spaces. Make sure that your blade is nice and sharp and you have a ruler handy, and be sure to save all the leftover fragments because you never know when those little pieces might come into play. And I'll bolt it into place here with my trusty hot glue gun and start working on the second piece. Now, this one is going to go both on this board and the adjacent one, so I'll make sure I'm cutting this as clean as possible so they'll just connect as effortlessly as possible. And once I'm more or less satisfied with that, I'll lay down my hot glue gun once more and bolt this into place. Now, be careful when you're doing this because, well, I've already ran into a bit of a snag. I went a little bit over. I'll have to fix that with the blade. Uh, so it won't be quite as clean of a connection with the other piece as I'd hoped for, but... You know what, c'est la vie, we'll do it as best we can here. We'll go from there. Remember how I said hold on to those fragments? Well, look right here, this piece is going to fit nicely right there. The beauty of this network is that I've made it um, basically two inches around every area. So I think a lot of these pieces will be recyclable. It should be pretty good. All right, we're going to start working on the front part of the trench. And uh, it's going to be a little bit crude, but trust me, there is a method to my madness. First off, you'll notice that I'm marking off with a sharpie here, a little dugout area for the front trench. Uh, everything else is going to get glued into place except for that area. So in theory, all I got to do is go in with the blade, cut it out, and it should pop out nice and easy. The rest, bolt it in here. There we go. And uh, yeah, nothing too fancy here. We're just going to hack off as much of this as I can. Make sure you salvage as much as you can, obviously. You don't want to just waste the remnants of the styrofoam, but uh, once those big chunks are done, it's time to go in with a little bit more finesse. And Remember, use a sharp blade, otherwise you might run into a snag like I'm about to here. Yeah, you can see, got caught on the edge there. It's kind of crude and ugly, but you know, we'll make it work. We'll, we can fix it later on. But uh, yeah, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have a nice sharp blade when you're doing all of this. All right, so this is working pretty well. Like I said, a little bit crude. And here's that little front uh, trench area that I was talking about. And it should pop out relatively effortlessly. Little glue might have gotten on the corner there, but yeah, we can just pick away at that. No big deal. All right, uh, we've got most of this trench finalized. You can see this is going to connect here. I got to work on a little corner piece so that the second layer will match like so. So I'm just going to do this right now, save myself the hassle later on. And speaking of, we're going to start working on the second layer for this piece. Um, this is going to be tall enough that most soldiers will be able to poke their head over it. Um, depends on how high you want to make it, how detailed you want. But for us, I think this should do fine with just two inches. 
And you can see here, I'm going to bolt that into place, making sure I have it uh, cut out to match the trench from below. And yeah, we're just going to keep going like this. Um, I'm kind of improvising as I go along, make sure that I have that dugout nice and flat. And this segment is going to come around and connect with the previous joint that I had earlier on. Nothing too, too crazy here. Like I said, we're just going to improvise, salvage what we can with the leftovers. Go nice and slow. Ooh, ooh, that was very smooth. Look at that. And ooh, good job. Yeah, that looks great. All right, once again, hot glue gun, bolted in place. Rinse and repeat. You know the drill. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to do the same with the back trench area. And once again, I want it to match uh, into the second segment, so I'll keep that fragment for later. Hopefully, I'll make this one a little bit more flush than the other one. All right, time to reload. And we'll bolt that down as well. There we go. This is starting to come together. I think you get a pretty crude idea of what I'm going for here. All right, it's time to start rounding out all of the edges. To do this, we'll take our trusty blade and can't stress this enough, make sure it's really sharp and really take your time with this one. You don't want to hurt yourself. We're going to do the top segment here and I'm going to do the bottom. Eventually, I'll actually take the blade and cut through both at the same time. That way we have a nice consistent uh, sweeping hill or round edges, that sort of thing. And uh, just take your time with that and until it, well, you get something that looks a little bit like this, right? I'll probably do a little bit more later on, but it's good for now. All right, now it's time for the most time-consuming part of the entire build. The floor and the wall segments with coffee stir sticks. I'm not going to lie, this took quite a bit of time, and I think Mitch and I went through about six bags of coffee stir sticks. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the gist of it is pretty straightforward. What you're going to do is break off these uh, planks of wood. You're going to lay them down on anywhere the soldiers are going to be stepping and along the wall segments. Now, obviously, this is going to take forever on camera, so what I'm going to do is a bit of a time lapse in a second here, but overall, like, the idea is pretty straightforward. It's not complex at all. You're just laying down planks of wood. You can get as crazy as you want. I'm doing lengthwise just to save myself the hassle, but totally up to you how you want to do this. You can see here I'm also working on the upper element. This is the, uh, the higher trench that oversees the bottom one, and uh, same thing, just laying down the stir sticks. Lots of stir sticks. Oh boy. But don't worry, it's all going to be worth it in the end, because once you're finished laying them all down nice and neat, you're going to get a board that's starting to look a little bit like this. And it is really coming together. We got a really nice layout here. Now it's time to start adding some of the detail work. Now the first step that we're going to do is lay down one part glue and one part water across all of the remaining areas of pink styrofoam that's still visible. We're going to lay it on there relatively thick so the sand and gravel have something to really grip to, as well as any areas where the styrofoam might be connecting to another piece and there might be some slight imperfections in there. This should cover all that up quite nicely. I'm also going to throw some down on the floorboards as well. Uh, you can imagine perhaps an artillery piece is hit here and there's debris scattered everywhere, including pieces of wood that I've scattered here and there. I wanted to make it cinematic, but still practical and something you can play in. Uh, on average, most of the trenches, you can fit about two soldiers in there uh, standing abreast, or you can even have something large like a Terminator or an Ogre standing uh, shoulder to shoulder as well. And once you've got all those areas fully covered, it's now time to put down the brush and pick up the Jaro Dirt. That's right, folks, the Jaro Dirt. It's got everything you need in it. It's got dirt, sand, rock, gravel, everything. I'm literally trying to hype up dirt here. Lovely. I'll just, you know, throw that on everything and hope for the best. Now, just so you all know, this is a very messy project. Um, I'm kind of lucky I've got a giant cardboard box that I can just pour things into willy-nilly, and the cleanup is relatively straightforward. But, uh, yeah, just so you know, <laughs> it gets pretty messy. But, eh, yeah, it'll be worth it, I'm sure, in the end. All right, once I've let that fully dry for a little bit, I'm going to go in with a new grade of dirt. 
Yes, that's right. There's literally grades of dirt here. This is the stuff that you would probably find with more um, railroad scenery and diorama makers. It's a very fine grade. So I'm going to slather my glue once again into different patches, and then we're just going to sprinkle this stuff on top of it. I'm literally just throwing more dirt onto other dirt. Thrilling stuff. I'm a grown adult who's playing with dirt. But then again, you're grown adults who are watching a grown adult play with dirt, so what does that say about you guys? I'm in the clear here. I'm a good person. <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself at night. I don't know how that's going for me. But look, this is fantastic. Oh, wait, throw a little bit more on there. Now it's fantastic. Look at that. It's really coming together. This is so beautiful. Not really, but it will be beautiful eventually. Okay, we're going to switch gears a little bit and start working with some smaller detailed pieces. And these were generously donated from Darcy, who you might remember helped us on the river episode. For this one, he took tiny pieces of clay and literally sculpted sandbags for us. And uh, yeah, these segments look really cool. We're going to put them in strategic locations around the trenches. In hindsight, I probably should have used the hot glue gun, but... Oh, well, I had to wait for this all to dry overnight anyways, but if you're in a hurry, definitely might have gone with the hot glue gun. And we'll just bolt these into place here. They look really cool, and I think he gave us about a dozen or so of these we can sprinkle around. Obviously, you don't need these pieces, but man, it's going to make this thing look cool. Now, if you caught my review episode a few videos back, you might have heard me talking about a new army painter product that we just got at the store. It's a spray paint that literally does not eat styrofoam. This stuff is amazing. I raved about it in the review. I'm going to rave about it again now. This stuff works really well. Uh, I think we only used half a can to do two feet worth of trenches, so a little goes a long way. And uh, yes, it does take a little bit longer to dry compared to a traditional spray paint, but... Pfft, that's a small price to pay. I mean, I sprayed this thing before I went to work, and by the time I got back, it was all dry. It was good to go. Yeah, this stuff is really great. Um, if you get a chance, I'd say pick up a can. It's going to save you so much effort. All right, with the primer out of the way, it's now time to start working on our base coat. To do that, we're just going to take some generic brown and slap it across all of the surfaces. Uh, the earthworks, the, uh, the different wooden elements, the sandbags, just slap it on everywhere. If some of the, uh, the primer shows through, don't worry about it too much. There can be some dark patches here and there. But for the most part, you want to cover, I'd say, 90% of the surface. You'll get something looking like this. Now, make sure you give plenty of time for that layer to dry. There's nothing worse than going in, trying to do some dry brushing, and the material is still wet. Now, what we've done is taken one part brown, one part golden yellow to make a lighter sandy color, and we're going to dry brush that across everything. Um, yeah, take a very large brush. That's probably your best bet to cover the majority of the surfaces. When you're doing the inside of the trenches, be careful when you're uh, going back and forth. It's going to slap against the wall pieces and it might leave little marks here and there. So just go in and smooth it out as best you can. Uh, it can be sloppy, like this is going to be a muddy trench network. It doesn't need to be beautiful, but let's at least try to get it consistent uh, with the different textures and the dry brushing and all that. But uh, it's a pretty forgiving build overall, so don't be afraid if you do make mistakes. It's a pretty easy fix. Get the inside here. Do the last minute touches. And voila. This is what the second layer looks like. All right, once again, give that layer plenty of time to dry, and we'll take one part brown one part golden yellow, and one part white to make an even lighter sand color. If you're uh, familiar with my shows, you know this formula. I use it in almost all my builds. It's tried, it's tested, it works fantastic. So uh, yeah, just do a light dry brushing and as the color is getting lighter, so too should your brush strokes. Um, you're gonna be leaving less and less paint behind with every layer. Um, yeah, we're just gonna keep building it up like this. Go from there. All right, yeah, this is really starting to look cool. Check it out. 
All right, for the next layer, we're gonna add two more parts of white to the mix to make an even lighter sand color. And at this point, I have barely any paint in the bristles. It's just a light dusting here and there. Uh, the sandbags will get a little bit extra of a blast just to make them a different color. But other than that, pretty straightforward. And I just want to touch on that. Uh, I've had some people come up in person and say they're a little intimidated making scenery and they're unsure, but I want you guys to know, like, this is a very straightforward process. It's just a matter of, of brush technique and, and practice. So I say get some scraps of cardboard, practice on that, see it. Within no time, this will be second nature to you guys. It's a very straightforward process. It's very user-friendly. I don't want you guys to be intimidated. You too can make awesome looking scenery like this. All right, so I think at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with the paint. This looks good overall. So we're gonna move on to the next step. We're gonna take more of our handy dandy glue and slather it in different patches. And we're gonna use a light flock. And this isn't the usual green uh, foresty stuff that I use. Mitch brought over some of his swamp flock, which is a little bit more of a neutral color. I actually quite like this stuff. I'm gonna have to pick up a couple bottles of this. I'm just going to scatter it here and there, a little bit in the trenches. Like I said, some of the segments might have gotten blown in from artilleries. We'll tap off the uh, the leftovers here. And voila! We have our trench. This is segment one. All right, let's do some still imagery here. This is what the trench looks like when it's all said and done. Now, granted, this did take quite a bit of time for fabricating and letting it dry. So this is definitely not a, a day-long project. This is probably more of a week one. But, I mean, this is it. It's just a couple simple elements. It's styrofoam, it's the coffee stir sticks, a um, little bit of dirt, the flock, and, and lots of paint. Well, yeah, let's be real, lots of paint, but um, yeah. I want you guys to try something like this. It's so straightforward, it's nice and simple. You guys can go as complex as you want or as crazy as you want. You can see here, this is a segment where the wall literally got blown in from some artillery. Um, this is what the trench network looks like when it's all connected, all the pieces here. I really like this. Mitch and I worked very hard on this. I think it looks fantastic. Here it is with the death core, which we showed off in one of the previous episodes. Uh, as it should be, these guys belong in the trenches. And, uh, yeah. I, not to toot my own horn, but I think this is a really cool looking piece. I'm really happy with it. We got to play with it at the local club and uh, we had a blast. So at the end of the day, this is how you make a trench network. And I really hope you guys feel a little bit inspired. Well, that has been today's episode. I really hope you guys liked it and maybe found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure that you hit the like, the share, and subscribe button down below. And please, pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build the channel from the ground up. If there's anything that you want me to build in an upcoming episode, let me know in the comments down below, and maybe we'll be able to build it for you in the future. On that note, I've been Mr. Wall from Mr. Wall Media, signing off.